It's literally a roller coaster. Six and a half hours later. So we're only here for a couple of days, but we've got to make the most of it, right? Flew in yesterday, we're here today doing the gig. We're gonna be doing an afternoon thing down on the beach. Yeah, so down on this beach, apparently we're meant to be playing, but when it gets windy, the water goes right up against the rocks. So we'll see how that one goes. The airport's always a little bit of a pain sometimes, especially if you've got large instruments. I find that you can take a guitar on as hand luggage, but a bass or a bass guitar, is just that little bit too big. So here's my number one tip before you go and fly with your bass. So make sure it's all prepared you know, maybe a day in advance, but I just recommend loosening the strings. So you can see here, when I arrived in Mykonos, I actually tightened the strings back up again. And now the reason why I do this is because the temperature and pressure changes in the cabin or in the luggage compartment. How much you loosen it all depends on if your guitar is going in the cabin, like his hand luggage, or if it's going in the luggage compartment. So if it's going in the cabin, just slightly loosen it, that'll be fine. If it's going in the luggage compartment, make sure the strings are as loose as possible without taking them off. Obviously, make sure you have the Allen key so you can adjust the intonation. But to be honest, because I'm only here a couple of days, I think it'll be fine. On our way to the gig, we don't know where we're going. Getting a taxi somewhere. Here's the setup for tonight. We've got the production team. All right, let's have a look at the gear we got. So we got yeah. the 12 quick exercise to warm up the fingers that I like to use before a show. I know you can't hear the bass, but I'm thinking of the whole tone scale. So if you played whole tone, just going up, very symmetrical scale, but you're skipping a note. So G, B, A. G, B, A, D flat, B, E flat, D flat, F, E flat, G, F, A, G, B. You kind of continue that pattern. So the fingering is like first finger, fourth finger, second finger, first, fourth, third. So you get that kind of movement, which is pretty difficult, separating the third and the fourth finger. If you start right down here, you get the position shifting and you're kind of getting that finger independence as well. Just a kind of good one to like get warmed up. Also, I decided to bring this, which I plug in my bass here. My bass is like plugged in. So I can kind of tune from here. I just find it's more accurate than the clip-on tuners that I'm used to, which are normally here. Like the snarky ones, I just find they either go out of battery really quick or they're just not as accurate as something that you plug in. I didn't really want to take my really big fat boss pedal that's like, you know, as big as my wallet, just because of weight on the plane. So this little cord thing is quite cool. And it's got a metronome here as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so you've got a tuner here and you also have a metronome. So I can see I'm bang on tune, look at that, there you go. So I just got back to the UK and I'm back in my little home studio. So I didn't film this part in Greece, I forgot to. Um, but this is where I'm gonna film my second tip for flying with a bass guitar. I mean, this can kind of apply to a lot of instruments, but I'm kind of just focusing on the bass guitar because that's what I play. So I'm actually using a mono case. I've had this for years. And you can probably tell this by some of the scratches and the bits falling off and stuff but I've honestly had this case for I want to say like six years or something like that or, or more and the reason why I use this case over my actual like flight cases that are purpose-built for flying is because the flight cases are very big and very bulky which is great if you know you're going to put your base 
in the hold. But if I'm thinking I want to get my base on as like hand luggage, then I actually put it in a mono case. And the reason why I do that is because this case is good enough to go in the hold if it has to, but it's not super bulky. So when you're showing the case to the people in the airport, it's not a super bulky case that they kind of look at it and go, no, that's definitely going in the hold. Normally when they look at this, they think it's big, obviously it is quite a big case, but you're just like less likely to be asked to put it in the hold. And uh, one of the things I actually do is, I haven't actually unpacked yet. So you can see it's full with my clothes. Now there is good padding in these. Again, it's not as good as a flight case, but I would prefer to use this and try and get it on as hand luggage. But you can see here, it's like some of my t-shirts. Like here's the t-shirt I was wearing for the gig. I just use it to pad out the base a little bit more, just so it's super secure. So in case it does go in the hold and get knocked around a little bit, it's not gonna kind of bump around in the case and potentially break. I put it also around the headstock, like I've got some t-shirts kind of padding the top. There's only a little gap there. If this wasn't here, it would be kind of bashing around a bit. So that's really my second tip, is to take a strong case like this, because if you take it in a flight case, you might have to put it in the hold. Take a strong case, but then stuff it full of clothes, especially around certain areas. And then obviously going back to my first tip, loosen the strings before you put it in. So if it goes on as hand luggage, that's great. Everyone's happy. But if you don't, you know you've kind of got it padded out so it's less likely to get broken. And while we're talking about the case, I have one more tip for you. As so I say, you've got the case here and obviously you normally wear it with the, the neck sticking up. If you actually flip it the other way, <laughs> so it's like this and you kind of put the straps on, on your back like this way. It kind of looks like a rucksack. Now this is a tip that some musicians have told me about. I've tried it, but to be honest, it never really works. But I'm actually gonna show you a script that you can use, or I've used before, at airports to help you get it on. And that's gonna be my third tip for this video. And like all my videos, if these tips are helpful, or if you have any questions, like further questions about some of this stuff, like just leave a comment below. All right, so here is my third tip, and this is probably my favorite, and it might be the most useful for someone that doesn't know what to say when you get to an airport. I've actually just quickly written out a script. So take this, but make it your own. First, most important thing, whenever you're talking to anyone at the airport, like obviously they're just trying to do their job, right? And there's certain rules that they have to follow. So the main tip I have is when you're talking to someone at the airport, whether it's security or a cabin steward, even, I don't know, the pilot, if they say something about your bass guitar and they're saying you can't do this, like always just agree with them at first. Come from a place of like, I completely understand instead of like being very defensive about it. And then you just explain your views and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So essentially the first step is really just agreeing with what they say. So if they ask you to check your bass guitar in, you can say, oh, I'm not gonna ch actually check my bass guitar in. I'm gonna take it on as hand luggage. And then they say, oh, you, you can't do that. Well, first of all, just agree and say, no, I completely understand. And then how I would explain it, I'll say something like, oh, I'm sure you can probably tell, you know, it's an expensive instrument and it means a lot to me, and I don't really know what I would do if I opened up the case in whatever destination, say, you know, I was in Mykonos, so in Mykonos and I found it was broken. I've had some issues in the past with other airlines where my instrument has just been thrown in the hold and not really looked after. <laughs> when I was at the airport, they thought I had a cello. Obviously, a lot of people don't understand what the instruments are, what they kind of mean to you. Obviously, say it's an expensive instrument. And then just also say you've had some issues in the past. Straight after you've said in the hold and not really looked after, I would say, so is it possible to maybe check in the base here and then take it to the gate so it will go in the hold last and then I'll know it will be looked after. So this is more for like peace of mind for you, but also for them because obviously they have to deal with this and they kind of want to just get it resolved and move on to the next person. If the instrument is going to go in the hold, as in, in the luggage department, the best thing you can do is probably put it on last just because then it's not under anything and you can just tell them to take more care of it. And most people at the check-in will understand this and they'll allow you to do this. And this is really the key sentence to really getting it through check-in is, so is it possible to maybe check in the base here and then take it to the gate so it will go in the hold last and then I'll know it will be looked after. Most airlines will let you do that. They know that when you get to the gate, 
they can take it off you and, and put it in hold. It just makes sense, right? It's being reasonable. You might have to pay for it as like overweight luggage or something, but that's a lot better than it going in the hold, right? And then once you've got through that stage, then you go to security. Now, what I've said here is security is normally fine. You can just pay for a seat. So normally security just assume that you've paid for a seat on the plane. They won't question it. It won't go through the machine. You'll just have to hand it over and they'll have to check it. So it might take a bit longer, but again, it's worth it, right? So just hand it over to them so they can search it. And then you do all your check-ins with everything else. Security is normally fine. Now the gate is like the last hurdle. This is when like you're about to board the plane and you hand in your boarding pass. If they don't say anything, then I would go straight on. Like I would just act like you've maybe paid for a seat for it and just have it on your back. If they don't say anything, it's cool. If they say something, just say, I was told to see if they had any room on the plane for my bass guitar and name. So name <laughs> is the check-in person. So yeah, just make sure you get their name in this stage. So when you're checking in, say it was like, I don't know, Charlotte or something like that. So I would say, I was told to see if they had any room on the plane for my bass guitar and Charlotte said, if there isn't any room on the plane, the best thing to do would be to take it here and then for the bass guitar to be put in the hold last as we wanted to make sure it would be looked after. You've spoken to people about it and you're also using words like we instead of like I. I could say I just wanted to make sure it would be looked after, but I don't know if you say we, all this language just makes it seem more like you're working as a team to try and solve this issue of like, okay, can't help but have this guitar, I need it. You have to fly with this and you know, there's no choice. So just look to kind of solve this issue together. And if you just kind of cooperate with them, it should be fine. And then once you actually get on the plane, normally the cabin steward is absolutely fine with it. Either they'll have a separate space for where you can put your bass guitar. You just ask them, oh, where can I put this? Or they'll just put it in the overhead locker. Or if there's a spare seat, they'll just get a double strap and they'll strap your guitar with like a double strap on the seat. In my head, if I can get it to the plane, then it's usually fine and we just kind of figure it out together. I don't think there's been any cases where I've had it taken off if I've got it through the gate. Yeah, you can use this script and I think it will really help, especially if you just don't know what to say, right? So when I first started doing this, I didn't know what to say. And I'll leave you with some footage from the gig. It's a really cool clip of Jonah doing this awesome guitar solo and it kind of gets a bit crazy. I'll see you next week. Thank you.